Hello everyone and welcome back. It's Tyler again with My Computer Works, and today we're going to be talking about how to properly transfer your data over to a new machine or basically just how to do it. There's a lot of different ways. I can't just say there's one proper way. There's actually a few different ways that you can transfer your data from one machine to another. It doesn't even necessarily have to be uh, from a backup, but when you're doing it, you are making a backup. So we're going to talk about how to make a, a backup of all your data or how to just transfer it. There are a few ways where you don't necessarily back it up. You could actually just transfer it, uh, for example, with like a transfer cable, which we'll go over. But um, I will also be showing you today how to remember this guy. This is Rogue One, the little laptop that I bought for the channel. I'll be showing you how to uh, back up your data and I'll be using Rogue, Rogue One as an example. I have some files that I've stuck on there that I'm going to show you how I would back up or move to another computer because that's a question that we get here a lot in my computer works and it's actually something that I've been doing a lot in the in recent months. Now, uh, this is the time, obviously, Black Friday is a great time to buy new computers. We've been talking about watching out for shopping scams and how to uh, properly shop for a new computer if you're in the market for one or trying to find one, trying to replace your old machine. Um, and so a big part of that is going to be data transfer and moving that data from one machine to another. So let's talk about how to do that and we'll go over it step by step and I'll show you on screen how I would do it uh, or, or how you could do it at home. Let's do it. All right, so before we jump onto uh, Rogue One over here and start backing up the data that I have created, I've created a couple um, test files and example files to kind of show, you know, if I was going to do it, how I would move it to a new computer to make it easy, depending on if it's a lot of files or if it's a full backup. And we'll go over both of those. We'll go over a really easy way to do it, and then we'll talk about more secure ways to do it. But uh, let's talk about cloud backup before we jump into that. So cloud backup is always a great way to back up your data. Now, cloud backup is an ongoing thing. This isn't a one-time deal like we're about to jump into. We're going to talk more about uh, one-time restores or one-time data movement. Backup's ongoing, right? So backup of your data to the cloud is something that's always running. Like if you have Carbonite or iDrive or um, if you have CrashPlan, these are these are cloud backups. Now here at My Computer Works, uh, if you're interested in a cloud backup, we will set that up on your computer for you. Uh, we use CrashPlan and iDrive, great companies, great backup companies, um, and and reliable backups, reliable, secure backups, which is the important part. You want to make sure that your backup is encrypted and secure if you're going to run a, a cloud backup, and that is what our backup is. It's also managed by us, so that makes it easy. So um, you can choose to go out on your own and manage your own backup. However, just make sure that you're being diligent and actually maintaining it. Uh, that's why a lot of times people will choose to go with our cloud backup because we manage it and uh, make sure that's running and make sure that anytime you need to restore data, it's done properly and we can, you know, we can do that for you. Uh, but that aside, that's cloud backup. So that's ongoing. Uh, cloud backups, very easy as far as moving your data, right? So it's installed on your computer. It's running already. So if you have a cloud backup service on your computer, it's already running. It's running all the time and it's backing up all your data every day as you add. At least that's the way it should be set, right? So it should be set to schedule just about every day or a week, whatever you choose. And uh, and every day at the end of the day, whatever, whatever you've added, it will add, right? So it doesn't do a whole new backup every day. It just it just brings in what's new. OK, so that's how a cloud backup works. Um, a typical cloud backup will be like a daily backup of what's new to the cloud and then anytime you need to like let's say you get a new computer well if you had let's say you know iDrive you would reinstall the iDrive program and uh, and restore the data or we do that for you again like I said if it's if we're running your cloud backup here at my computer works um, we will do the backup and the restore so you don't have to worry about that so cloud backup always an option if that's something you're interested in talk to my computer works if you're already a client Call, call the office and uh, and talk to them about that. So um, that aside, though, not cloud backup. Let's jump over to other options, right? So let's talk about data transfer cable. I have one right here. I knew I had one. Um, so a data transfer cable is exactly what it sounds like. It's a cable that allows for the transfer of data. Usually it's going to be like USB and then USB, or in this case, it's a USB to USB-C because this could be used for um, a Mac or Windows computer, this data transfer cable. I have actually used this data transfer cable before. Um, great, great method. Um, older method still works. 
you can still use a data transfer cable. So, you know, it goes into one computer, this side goes in the other, and then you either use like a third party software or the built in Windows options or Mac options to you to do the, the data transfer, right? So that's great. Um, great way now. And I want to touch on that real quick. I mentioned Mac, you know, Mac and Win and Windows both have their own they call it a backup. We don't consider it a backup. We've talked about this before in videos like uh, OneDrive is not a backup. Um, it's file synchronization, right? And it's really great for file synchronization. Now, does it make a copy of some of your files into the cloud? Yes, 100% it does. However, I will say people who rely solely on OneDrive and iCloud as their backup usually wind up disappointed as uh, I you know, um, OneDrive and iCloud typically miss things, whereas backup programs such as iDrive or CrashPlan or Carbonite don't miss those things. They usually get everything, okay? Um, so that is something to mention. I know each one, Mac and Windows, talk about OneDrive and iCloud, but I think it's important to mention in this video that, uh, that those are more for file synchronization. So the quick movements of files from one computer to another would be a, a great definition of what uh, file synchronization is, right? So if you wanna have files, on multiple computers synchronizing to the other devices so you have access to them at any time. That's great. OneDrive, Google Drive, iCloud, great for that. Um, but as far as an actual secure backup, no, that's not what you would wanna consider those programs or, or, or those software. Um, they are more so again for file synchronization. So we, we want you to have a secure backup if you're gonna do a long ongoing cloud style backup. Um, so make sure it's something that's a real secure Again, encrypted secure backup that's what you want um, but if you don't want to do a long-term data transfer cable great method let me get that in the screen again so you just go out and you get yourself a data transfer cable like I said usually USB on both sides or USB to USB C so USB a to USB C okay. cool that's data transfer cable let's talk about the other methods okay uh, again physical devices local things that we can do we can do an external drive or we can do a flash drive Okay, either of those works. This is just a little, I'm gonna hold that up to the screen there. That's just a little uh, sand disk flash drive. Okay, 32 gigabyte. This is a two terabyte external hard drive. Okay, um, either one, right? This I use on a monthly basis. I do an entire backup of my computer. Um, sometimes I'll do every two weeks if I've added a lot within that two weeks time. Okay, just so I have a local copy in addition to the things that I keep in the cloud. And then uh, and then these I typically use for a fast file movement um, or to, you know, if I do a small backup or, or things like that, they're great for, for small amount of files. You can get larger flash drives, but I wanna note this because I don't know if we've ever touched on this in past videos. Don't trust your backup to these, right? So like if you have 128 or 500 gigabyte little flash drive, don't trust that little flash drive to hold your whole backup, right? It's not a storage matter. It's just the fact that these give out. They're cheap, cheaply made. They give out. They give out a lot. Um, flash drives go out all the time. They have issues. You have to reformat them or sometimes they just they just give out. So if you're going to do a local backup that you want to be able to trust and it's going to be something physical in addition to your cloud backup, uh, go with the external drive, right? Or an external uh, solid state drive, hard drive or solid state drive and external. Uh, you know, one of the ones with the, the nice cord, uh, you know, look for a good brand like Toshiba, SanDisk, uh, WD is Western Digital, great brand, Seagate. Um, these are these are good trusted brands. That's what you're going to want to trust your local to. Um, and then I, this is just what I do every 10 years. I swap these out. It's 40 bucks. This is the insurance on my files. If every eight to 10 years, I got to get a new one of these, I should probably do it even quicker than that, like six years. It's just these last usually a long time. And I never usually keep it on one. Again, I don't just trust this one thing to all my data. That's a bad idea. Uh, I see that go wrong for people all the time. They trust all their data to this one little device and then boom, they lose it or uh, gets stolen, gets damaged. It goes dead or break, whatever. These are physical. They're susceptible to, to uh, phys you know, what physical things are susceptible to, which is dying or just going out on you. So. Um, that is not something you want to fully trust your backup to. So without further ado, though, we've talked about some of the methods. We've talked about cloud backup. We've talked about data transfer cables. We've talked about um, and then using, you know, flash drives and 
uh, external hard drives or external solid state drives. So let's see it in action, right? Enough talk. Let's hop over to Rogue One and see what happens when we actually move some files or actually do this. Um, let's see the application. All right, everybody, here we are on Rogue One. You are gonna get to see this in real time. Um, I have already plugged in the flash drive. Let me go ahead and show that flash drive in the laptop. I know my VR screen is kind of messing it up, but the flash drive is in the laptop. I just plugged it into any available open USB port. It doesn't have to be like a specific backup port. People ask me that all the time. You know, does it have to be a specific USB port? No. Uh, doesn't matter. It can be any USB port that's open on the machine for the for the most part. Now you do have different types as far as transfer rate goes, um, but we don't need to get all complicated. Just put it into an open port. If you see it's a 3.0 port, great. Um, what you want to do at that point is here we are at the home screen, at the desktop screen, and we're gonna open up the file explorer down here. Now most people have this on their taskbar. It's that little fold that folder icon, but if you don't, you can just do Windows key and E which will open that up, okay? Now that we're here inside the file explorer, I'm gonna go ahead and full screen to make this easier to, uh, to see. Um, and we've got all my files here. Again, none of this stuff is, I think <laughs> you get to see some of the stuff I was messing around with Copilot. We might get into Copilot in another video down the road. Uh, Copilot is the new AI for Microsoft and I had a really great time with it the other day. I don't wanna get too far off track, but we may be doing a video coming up on Copilot because I had a lot of fun with it the other day. Uh, but anyway, back to the video. So we're, what I wanna do is I have documents that I've created. So I'm gonna go into my documents section and I have uh, I have six documents here. I have example one, example two, example three. I have test one, I have test two, and I have test three. Now I want all of those files. And so I'm gonna show you guys something cool, uh, something that I like to do whenever I'm gonna move files over to a flash drive, right? So I, I stuck a 32 gigabyte flash drive in there. If I click on this PC, I can see that I'm getting 28.5 gigabytes of that on the flash drive because it's the E drive. It's never gonna be your C drive. When you plug in a USB flash drive, it's, uh, it's gonna populate a new drive letter that's not C because C is your local disk, your Windows. Op um, Windows operating system is usually installed on C, okay? Uh, the USB or the flash drive is going to be shown under devices and drives in this PC as its own new drive. Here, it's drive E. I have 28.5 gigabytes free on that drive, okay? I'm going to hop back over to documents now. I'm going to click on the top document. I'm going to scroll down to the last one. I'm going to hold shift and click, which has now selected all of those. I'm going to right click now and choose properties. And this will give me a little details. These are zero bytes because <laughs> there's no data in them. But if they were bigger, let's say you wanted to get a collection of how big your files are, you would do the same thing. You would click on the top one, click on the bottom, right click and go to properties. And on size, as we see here, size, that would tell you how much, how you know, how big those files are, how much data total those file are. So like, let's say each of those had been a gigabyte, right? it would tell me six gigabytes in here, but they're not, they're zero kilobytes, which is why it's saying zero kilobytes. So I definitely have enough room on that flash drive, okay? Now we got a couple options here. You can literally, now that, I, that you have all of them selected, you can click and drag them over to the flash drive in the side, like I'm doing here. Or if you wanna do it the right way, you can right click and go to show more options, send to, and you'll see now that that E volume, that new volume E, which was that flash drive I wanted to send it to is there. Click on that. And it is going to make a copy over there. Now I open the E drive and there they are, okay? So that's a really easy way to move your files just to a flash drive. And now if I were to eject that flash drive, I would have all of those files on the flash drive. Great easy way to move some files around, okay? Now let's talk about backing up the whole shish bang, everything, right? So if you wanted to do that, you would go into this PC, you would open up local disk C, go to your user folder, get the properties on that folder, okay, and see the size on that, and do basically the same thing. Make a copy of it, you could do copy paste, you could drag it over, I wouldn't recommend drag it over, I would do copy paste, and I wouldn't do send to. For the user folder, I would, I would do copy paste if you're gonna do the backup that way. 
only 5.41 gigabytes, so I could make a backup on it. And for the video, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, again, this is the very rudimentary, like, I w you can do it this way, but there are better ways to do it. For example, we use a, a program here called Robocopy. It's a built-in uh, backup that you, that you can just run straight from the command prompt. Great, great way to copy your files. It's, it's something that we use and great program. Um, so there are software and programs out there that you can use to do this part for you. But for now, I'm just going to show you this rudimentary way. I'm going to copy. I'm going to click on the user profile. Show more options because this is Windows 11. I'm going to copy. Go to that new volume. And I'm going to paste it. Okay. So it's now. Yeah, and I need to provide administrative permission to copy it over. I'm going to continue on that. And then now here it goes. Okay, so that's a, again very simplistic, almost barbaric way to move your files from from uh, from your your computer over to a flash drive if you need to move them. We do this sometimes in cases when we can't uh, maybe connect to a computer or um, are having issues with the computer or whatever it may be. And you can see now it's in underway. It's going to be about 45 minutes to get all that data. That 9.49 that it's showing, um, there's a good chance that there's some stuff in there that basically isn't going to be able to be moved to the flash drive. So don't worry, though, if you see that and you have to skip items, pay attention to what it's skipping. It's usually things that are not your documents, pictures, music, things like that. So um, you, you could sit here and wait for it or come back and check it in a while and see if the backup or the, well, sorry, I would call this uh, file transfer is done. Um, but it is still technically a backup. You are backing up your user data. You are putting it to a flash drive. But again, very barbaric, rudimentary way to do it. There's other much more elegant uh, ways to do it. And we we employ some of those. I just didn't want to get into those today uh, because they are a bit complex. And so this is something that anybody could do at home. Uh, if you just plugged a flash drive in, you could copy your, your user folder, um, especially if your computer was like on the brink and you were about to go. Um, you know, that's fine. Sometimes you, you don't have the option to, you know, if the computer's falling apart and it's dying, you don't have the option to, uh, run a cloud backup or do file transfer via a cable. Um, sometimes you just have to slap a, a flash drive in and, and copy that user folder right over. So if you're in that situation or you're just looking for a really simple backup, uh, and restore method, I hope this helps. And so the restoring part would go, um, we could probably go over that in another video, but basically that just involves taking the files from the flash drive and then putting them back into the same place right so pictures to pictures music to music documents to documents easy stuff so uh, i hope that this video helps anybody who's trying to complete this task and if you enjoyed it please hit that like and subscribe below share the video across your social media if you can for us and join us on the next one thank you everyone and we'll see you then